so I'm at breakfast with this guy. Remember him? Now he, they can see you, it's wide angle. And uh, he was concerned that he didn't look good enough this morning. Right? Bad head. I don't know. What do you, you what do you what does the YouTube audience think? How does it look? <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting uh, started with our day here, so I will be back to you guys in a bit. You're welcome. Wait a minute. Valentine wants to say something. No, I don't want to say anything. Oh, he doesn't want to say anything. I guess like and subscribe as always. <laughs> the deliciousness has arrived. Corned beef hash, hash brown, scrambled eggs, and. Pancakes? I thought you were talking about me. And oh, are you scrambled eggs? <laughs> and what's this? Uh, it's um, grilled toast with drizzled strawberry syrup. Okay, you top. just ordered this five minutes ago, and you don't remember what it is. This happened before at the Black Bear Diner, also. <laughs> Dude, if it looks good. I don't care what it is, as long as it tastes. Good. I think you said it was Marionberry French toast. I think that's what it is. Sure. Whatever you say. All right, time to chow. Good evening guys, so it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but we're going to do a Q&A and I'm just going to hit some of the questions that have been uh, put in the comments on various videos over the last uh, several days and we'll, um, we'll see where it goes from there. So here we go. So first question would be from Judy, aka Hitchhiker, and it's a long comment that she left, but the question that I'm pulling out of her uh, long comment was she asked, is Magnum cold? I, I would imagine referencing the the video showing that he's in a jacket. He's in this he's in this uh, jacket here. So yes, it has been cold here. Now it's not been as cold recently, but the reason I'm still putting the jacket on him is because um, Great Danes don't have undercoats. So most uh, breeds of dogs actually have an undercoat. So they have the hair that you see, you know, that comes up off their skin, and then they have like a, a thick undercoat that's actually underneath that that actually helps keep them warm. Great Danes are one of the breeds of dogs that do not have undercoats, and so that means they get cold very easily. They're not designed to be left outside, especially in cold weather, in cold weather climates, that is. And so if you do, they would actually freeze. So uh, the re or hypother get hypothermia. So the reason we leave the jacket on him, uh, even though it's not quite as cold now, is well, one, he's getting over pneumonia, or I guess he's technically over pneumonia, but nonetheless, it's just nice. It keeps him warmer than he would otherwise be with having no undercoat under his hair. Um, so yeah, with the coat on, you can run your hand under the coat, and you can feel that there's quite a bit of warmth that gets trapped gets trapped against his skin because of the coat. So it works really, really well. And that was a gift from Matt and Sam. That's uh, Sadie's parents. So um, that, that was a very nice gift. Uh, next question would be, uh, then Remus King of Rome 5, in reference to the last video that I did about lessons, uh, important lessons in life, he said, uh, <laughs> He said, good lessons, wait five years to stand up for yourself, referring from my years of age 10 to age 15. He says, wait five years to stand up for yourself, then use chemical weapons. He thinks that was funny, so, uh, you know, I think that comment's pretty funny too, actually. And then, uh, I'm assuming this is a guy, I don't know, so I'm just assuming I'm going to refer to him. Uh, so then he says, I wonder where this kid is now, whether he's homeless or a vanner or what he is, uh, referring to the kid that, that bullied me for all those years in school. I don't know. I, like I said, his parents pulled him out of school, uh, out of our school within a week of that incident. Never saw him again. And no one, I, I mean, I don't live in that area anymore. I, I'm in a different part of the country now. But even people that uh, I know still, the few people that I still kind of stay in contact with from my high school years, I was not a fan of high school. You know, I was one of these people that I was the odd kid in the sense that I could not wait to be an adult. I never enjoyed being a kid. I mean, I'm not saying you, I didn't enjoy doing things as a kid, but what I'm saying is I never enjoyed my peers. I never enjoyed being seen as a kid. Uh, the entire time I was growing up, all I could I couldn't not wait to be being an adult. I just couldn't. It was there was nothing more that I 
aspire to is just simply to be an adult. I hated my peers. I hate, not not them as people, but what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't enjoy being a child. That's just not something I really cared for. Um, even as a kid, I would try to go hang out with the adults. I would try to have conversations with the adults because I felt they were more mature. I did, never felt my peers were my equals in that sense because they were too immature in my opinion. So I, I don't know why I digressed on that. My point is, is I don't know if, where this guy is now. I don't know if he's dead, alive. I don't know if he's in jail. If he's not in jail, I don't know. And really, I don't care. I mean, this is this is long, long, long ago history. So, uh, it, the, the only point in mentioning him was just because it made for uh, a great life lesson. That was the reason. Okay, so next question would be. Uh, Isabel Baker, she says, oh, great lesson about standing up for yourself. Wouldn't this be a great lesson to teach us when we are young, like in the fifth grade? <laughs> yeah, well, I think the reason that didn't happen is because I, I was being brought up in a Christian school, and so there's a lot of the turn-the-other-cheek philosophy taught in the Bible about, you know, if someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other cheek so they can strike you on the other cheek, as Jesus taught. But the reality of it is, you know, I think that probably had a lot to do with why we were not taught to to uh, hit back or to stand up for ourselves. But I figured it out eventually on my own. So, Next question would be from Barbara Tucker in regards to some of the footage from the dog park where you saw Sadie, Matt and Sam's dog Sadie, picking up something off the ground and chewing it up. So she said, Barbara Tucker asked, what was Sadie eating? When you're in the dog park, the dogs pick up anything and everything off the ground. So whether it's pine cones, whether it's sticks whether it's uh, uh, tennis balls that have been lost in the park and they find them, the dogs are always picking up something. So in that case, I think she was just eating a stick because for some reason the dogs love picking up and eating sticks off the ground. Uh, who knows why. Uh, next question is from Travis Almoth. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I think it's Travis Almoth. He says, uh, in re reference to my video titled Winner Winner, he says, Alex is fine. Am I allowed to say that? Who wants sushi? <laughs> yes, Travis, you're allowed to say that. Yes, Alex is a very attractive guy. And uh, you are allowed to say that because it doesn't bother me. So, yes. Uh, and he does have an Instagram account also. So I'll link that in the description below if any of you care to see Alex's uh, Instagram. And who wants sushi? Well, you know, I'll, I'll join you for sushi anytime. So uh, I'm all about that. All right, next question is from, uh, I'm not even sure how to say this, Rosie, oh, it looks like Rosary, Rosary Chaplet. It looks like an abbreviation with some uh, vowels left out, but it looks like Rosary Chaplet. Anyway, asked, did you do a video on being an expediter? Um, I did a video early on in this channel titled Making Money. It was one of the first videos I put up, and I talked briefly in general, con, uh, general terms about the work that I do. But I did not go into specifics about what I'm doing right now uh, because of the uh, because of this channel. I don't need people that have a grudge or have a problem or that are just being trolls to mess with or tamper with my work or my income. So I didn't get into specifics, but I give a general context in that video titled Making Money on you know what kind of work I do and how I make money. So if that makes sense. So check that out. Next question would be Lisa Williams of North Star Great Danes, who's been uh, very supportive of this channel and has uh, sent uh, things to Magnum and Stanley and also is a, a supporter on Patreon. And Lisa Williams asked uh, in regards to Magnum's nails and cutting Magnum's nails, do I use a Dremel or clippers? Um, and she said, I use a Dremel Micro. Uh, I just use clippers. Uh, I know a lot of people, I just use these guys. I know a lot of people use the Dremel on dog's nails and they seem to love it and they, they rave about how great the Dremels are. Um, in my case, I don't know, I've been using these for years on all my dogs because I've had a lot of dogs over the years and they seem to work just fine. So, And then there were some people that also mentioned in the comments about, oh be careful, oh be careful, don't cut the nails too short, you'll cut into the quick and then the animal can bleed and or you know in some cases the animal could bleed to death. I know. <laughs> I am very careful. I've been clipping animals, uh, dogs' nails, cats' nails, for a couple of decades now. 
So I, I know what I'm doing, I'm very careful about it, and I've never bled one of them yet. So, because if anything, it's always better to cut the nail a little bit long, leave the nail a little bit longer than you want, and then that way you don't have to worry about getting and accidentally cutting into the quick. So I'm always very careful, and I've never bled an animal yet doing a, a nail trim. So hopefully that puts that to rest. Next question would be from Nancy Federson. She said, um, in reference to the video titled Winner Winner that had a picture of Alex and I at sushi, Nancy asked, is he the guy from the video on monogamy and marriage sitting on the back of your, your truck, your camper, whatever you want to call this? Um, yes, Nancy, that is Alex. So he was in three different videos with me towards the end of summer. He was with me on the video about, yes, monogamy, marriage, and cheating. He was in that video. He was also in the weight loss video that I did on this channel. And then he was also in the video on this channel titled Do Not Wait or Don't Wait um, about seizing the day, which is just take advantage of the time that you have right now since you don't know how long you're going to have uh, on this planet. So, yes, that is the same Alex. That's the same guy. Yep. Next question is Lane. Uh, let's see. Lane 13. He has the numbers in Roman numerals. So, Lane 13 uh, asked... Um, in regards to Stanley in one of the videos, I think, where I'm playing with him and tickling him in the belly to get him to play and scratch and grab me. He says, were you doing a Bubbles impression with Stanley? Um, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. So, I'm I, no, I'm not. I wasn't because I'm not sure what that's in reference to. The only thing I can think of that was Bubbles was, uh, wasn't there, one of, wasn't one of Michael Jackson's animals named Bubbles or something? Uh, anyway, I don't know. And, he says, and then Lane says, we'll have to call him Steve French now. So I, I don't get that reference. I guess I could look it up, but I, I don't get that reference. So sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Lane. Next question is from No Regrets with Kim. She says, hi, Jay. I'm just curious how many people heard what you were saying once Stanley started flexing and posing behind you on top of the fridge. <laughs> Thanks for the dash cam of him while rolling the closing credits. And that was on my religion and faith video. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. You know, the thing of it is, is when you have animals, they will, I guess probably like kids, the animals will often upstage you. And so, you know, I probably do lose some people's attention when the animals, you know, especially Stanley, when Stanley tries to photobomb or video bomb the shot, then I'm sure I probably do lose some people's attention. But, eh, you know, whatever, that's okay. We'll, we'll tolerate it. Uh, then Peggy Bowles. Uh, Peggy Bowles had a question. She said, that generator of yours is really quiet. How does it compare to the Honda price-wise? So uh, I think I've touched on this in some other videos, but I'll go ahead and talk about it again here. The main uh, selling point of the, the generators like Furman, like what I have, or the Champion generators, or the Ryobi, or the Powermates, or any of those other brands that are not Honda or Yamaha, is that those other brands that are not Honda or Yamaha will do the same job, but they're easily half the price of the Hondas and the Yamahas. So the Hondas and the Yamahas are kind of the gold standard of the inverter generators, the quiet generators, but they're expensive. So if you want to buy the Cadillac of inverter generators by a Honda or a Yamaha, you're going to spend over a thousand dollars for the equivalent of what I have. In this case, my Furman generator was $450 on sale when I bought it. So that's the reason I bought it is because it's a lot less money. And I, you know, I really, I've been pretty happy with it. So no complaints here. Okay, so next question. Uh, these are, so these questions I'm pulling from my published comments. So they span a lot of different videos. So these are not all coming off of one video. And the reason I mention that is because the next question is from Travis Almoth again. And so this is another question that he asked on another video. But as I'm scrolling through my published comments, his question just happens to come up next. So even though I've already answered one of Travis's questions, I'll answer this one as well. So this one was on the uh, RV van stuff video about, you know, doing maintenance on the door and the generator and all that stuff. So Travis asked, do you live in a storage place? Am I allowed to ask that? Um, would anyone care for a mint? So Travis, no, I do not live in a storage facility. <laughs> the storage facility is where I store the cargo that I pick up and deliver. And so that's why I was in a storage facility is because that's where the cargo is kept. Uh, when I'm there, since uh, that is paid for by me, um, that's when I often will do little things on the RV. I mean, I can do them anywhere. I could do them on the street also. But uh, I like 
doing it there a lot of times because uh, I have additional tools and stuff that I keep in the storage, um, the storage play, the storage shed, whatever. And so then I, you know, any any additional things that I might need, whether it's sealant or just different tools or a different power tool or or whatever else I might need, uh, anything that I don't store in here is stored in my storage facility so it's easier to just do those little projects while I'm at my storage facility. But no, I don't live there. And are you allowed to ask that? Sure. I, You know, y you guys can ask anything on this channel and I'm not going to be offended as long as you're polite about it. You know, if you're being a fool then you're going to get the consequences that come with that. But as long as you're being polite about it, you can ask anything on this channel and it's not going to bother me, even if it's of a personal nature. I mean, the worst that's going to happen is if you ask me something too personal is I just won't answer it, but I'm not going to be upset about it. Um, and then he said, would anyone care for a mint? Sure. <laughs> I'll take a mint, sure. Uh, next question would be from Doug Schwartz. And he also had a long comment, so I'm just going to uh, pull out the question from his long comment, but it was about the RV van stuff video. And he says, that ladder is awesome, referring to the ladder that Lori B. sent me, the collapsible telescoping ladder. He says, that ladder is awesome and absolutely perfect for your needs. Is it made of aluminum or lightweight steel? Um, I believe it's aluminum. I mean, just from the feel of it and the color of the metal, it appears to me... Uh, because of its lightweight nature and the color, it looks like to me that it's aluminum. So, which would make sense. A lot of these, mo a lot of ladders are aluminum. So, either aluminum or fiberglass. Aluminum because they're lightweight. Fiberglass because they're, you know, same kind of thing. They're resilient, and weatherproof, and all that stuff. So, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. And we want to welcome a new patron to the Patreon team. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, this is going to be Lyra M. So, Lyra M. Thank you so much for joining us, and your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks. Okay, guys, since the Q&A went kind of long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into two parts. So this will be part one, and then part two I will release on tomorrow's video. Okay, thanks. And we want to welcome a new patron to the Patreon team. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, this is going to be Lyra M. So Lyra M., thank you so much for joining us and your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks. Let's go ahead and wrap this video. I'm going to go ahead and show you the animals and then we'll call it a wrap. Hey buddy. Hey. What do you have on your head? A little fuzz. Anyway, there's Magnum. And once he's fed and got his pills, he just curls up and crashes out for the night. Look at this. That's surprising. Wow. Wow. What are you doing, cat? Huh? Okay, guys, thank you for joining me for another video, and I will see you on the next one. All right, bye-bye.